What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Untamed Outdoors. So if you guys have been watching the channel here lately, we've been doing a lot of catfishing. And we've been using these pool noodles as jugs here in our local lake to catch a lot of the blue catfish. Now these can be used for other species as well, but they work really good for catfish because you can put up to five hooks on each jug here in Oklahoma. Every state is different, so all the stuff I'm telling you today only applies to Oklahoma wildlife laws, um, other lakes, other states, everything is different. So you need to check your local regulations in your local area and your state. So I'm only talking on my area today. But we've been doing really well with these jug lines. We've been using shad or perch as bait or even bar as hot dogs. Um, we'll save some of that stuff for a later video, but we've been getting a lot of people that's been watching the videos and they want to know how we make these catfish and jugs. And this is the way we make them. Now there are hundreds of different ways to make jugs. In the old days, we used to use like one gallon pop bottles, bleach bottles, laundry, uh, soap bottles, all kinds of ways to do it. Um, this is the way I prefer now and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. We've been getting a lot of requests from uh, you awesome viewers wanting to see how we do it. And um, I've been kind of changing it up this year. This is the way I'm going to make the new ones. We've been having a lot of success with them. And I'll show you some of the tips that I have learned over the years. Some of the stuff not to do. And some of the stuff that will save you a uh, from having a headache. So basically, this is what we are going for today. This is, a, um, this is one of the bigger size pool noodles. So sometimes when you go to Walmart or you go to Dollar Store or wherever you see the pool noodles, sometimes you'll see these bigger diameter ones like this. Sometimes you'll see some that are about two inches in diameter. Now those do work. However, if you get a good size catfish on there, we have lost them before. We've had some catfish that were 40 to 50 pounds plus and they take those smaller diameter pool noodles under and the weight of them just they just take off and you never see them again these right here these they can pull them under but they will uh wear them down and then eventually they'll pop back up and then the way we do it here we have the buoyancy of the pool noodle and this three quarter inch pvc which fits right in the hole of these pool noodles now there are many different manufacturers of these pool noodles some of them, when you get this PVC, this is just three quarter inch PVC pipe. Some of them will fit really tight in this hole. Some of them will not. This one here has just a little, like a 32nd or a 16th inch gap. So it kind of slides, but I'll show you how to fix that. So let's get started. This is what we are going to try to uh, make right here. So kind of go over some of the stuff we have. Um, but Basically, you're going to start with your pool noodle. I've already been making some. This is just a little short version here that don't take up too much room. Got that. Um, this right here is braided twine. Not the big stuff. It's the smaller stuff. We have better luck with the smaller stuff. The bigger stuff, the fish just seem to know it's there and they just don't bite it as well. Now, when you go to Walmart or your local hardware store to get this, a lot of times you're going to see twisted line or twisted uh twine you want to get the braided and i promise you you will thank me if you have ever tried the twisted stuff when you start catfishing and you catch your first catfish first thing catfish you want to do is they just want to sit there and twirl and twirl and twirl that is their defense mechanism and usually how they try to get off the hook and the twisted stuff uh it will just fray and just make a big knot the braided stuff seems to work a lot better all right, for the weights in our area here, um, we have you know several dams and there's creeks that feed our lake and there's usually always a current. So these railroad ties right here, they allow these pool noodles or jugs to at least drift a little bit. Now, if you didn't have a weight on this at all, it's gonna go pretty fast with the current. These railroad spikes right here, they're cheap. Pretty much free if you live around a railroad you can usually find somebody that has some of these that you can get pretty uh cheap and uh you know if you use lead or anything like that if someone else checks your line there a lot of times they'll cut your lead off and they'll go home and make some catfish and sinkers or whatever so these are cheap they're easily replaceable and they're just the right weight to slow these noodles down in the current or wind or that type of situation so we got that um we got our caps right here that we're gonna put on the PVC. We have a eye bolt. Um, I don't remember what size this is, just a small 
as small as you can get. This is as small as I could find at our local tractor supply. We got some uh, three aught barrel swivels, some six aught eagle claw circle hooks, some reflector tape. Of course, we got some pipe glue. We got a marker because here in our state of Oklahoma, you have to have your name and address marked on your jug somewhere. Um, there's some more information you got to have on there, but every state is different, so make sure you check up on that. Got a flay knife here I'm going to cut this noodle with. Got some chrome duct tape here, and this is something new. Um, the other night we went out and checked our jug lines, and it was getting dark. We couldn't hardly see them, and we had a, a pretty strong flashlight. We were shining across the lake. We still couldn't see them, so I added some chrome duct tape here. I seen this at Walmart. I was like, you know what? That will work in the night or the daytime, and then... We went a little extra and uh, got some reflector tape. This was over at Walmart in like where the yard sale signs and stuff like that is. We're going to try that out. All right, so first things first, we want to kind of keep all these the same color. We want to keep them about the same size. And the reason is, is if you guys live on a very popular lake where people like to catfish with jug noodles and similar type things like this, sometimes you can get a little confused because there's only so many colors of these catfish or these pool noodles so if someone else is fishing in your area with the same colors it gets kind of confusing because once the fish gets on here you guys seen some of our videos they will carry these things quite a way quite a distance so what we're going to do is we're going to try to make them all pretty similar i got this buck knife here and i'm just going to cut it down to about the same size as this one here all right and we can get this stuff out of the way. Alright, now we will take our PVC. We want it to be about the same size as this one as well. So, don't have to be perfect. This isn't rocket science or nothing else like that. The fish aren't going to judge you. They're just going to be after that bait. And you can make this any size you want. You can make these smaller. You can make them bigger. If you're targeting huge flatheads that weigh 100 pounds, you might want to make these a lot bigger and have a lot more of this pool noodle there that is uh, more, way more buoyant that will wear down that big catfish. All right, so put this one aside. All right, we're going to see. I'll show you guys. Put that on there like that. It's going to slide pretty good. So first things first, let's go ahead and put our end cap on one end and yes you can get pipe cleaner and all that type of stuff but this isn't really holding your uh, water line to your house or nothing fancy like that this is just for fishing and it will seal and do just fine as pipes clean anyways all right so we're gonna let that dry a little bit so what I found to try to keep this from uh, sliding back and forth so crazy is this tape right here but first Let's drill the hole for our eye bolt. And I just got a uh, drill here and uh, just a drill bit that's barely smaller than this eye bolt. And I'll show you why. Go ahead and start getting that threaded on like that. And if you use a drill bit, a drill bit that's a little bit smaller, then the di diameter of your eye bolt it'll be hard like this so use a screwdriver or something just to kind of twist it in and it also kind of helps to seal it but i got another secret for that um i have made these in the past and i've had water get in there it doesn't really hurt it it just makes it a little bit less buoyant because there's more weight so what i like to do is i like to take this glue here and just run it in there like that all in the bottom there and that will that will actually seal around this eye bolt and uh keep it from leaking all right so there we go we got one partially made you know what i just did forgot to put the uh nut on there let me get a nut driver okay yeah that wouldn't have been good First time the big old flathead got on there, he would have pulled that eye bolt right out. So tighten down your nut. All right. 
and as you can see it pretty much made a seal on there so no water should get in there let's put some more glue on here do all this over again all right that'll seal nice and tight okay so to keep this from slipping what are we going to do um, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can put electrical tape on here. Um, I have tried to put zip ties on here. That didn't work too good. And the way star foam works like this is it has all these little bubbles in here that traps the air in and that what is uh, makes them buoyant. So if you compress it, that actually takes the air and the buoyancy out. So we don't want to put a bunch of zip ties on there. What I have found to work, seems to be working pretty good, is this tape right here. So we'll just start it right up against our noodle and you want to make sure you have the noodle downside because this is your line side your line will go through this eye bolt right here so always make sure you're pushing down eye bolt side I started to put this on on wrong I just kind of keep going around and around and twisting what we're going to do is we're going to make this outside diameter of this pipe thicker than the opening of the pool noodle in the middle. And hopefully it'll keep it from sliding over. Alright, that should do it. If it slides a little bit or it slides a bunch, it ain't really that big a deal. It's just easier to make these noodles like this. We usually try to make them five or six inches longer than the piece of star foam because it gives you a handle. When you pull the boat up next to it, you can just reach down and pull it right here. All right, so there you see the tape is wider than the hole of the noodle. So therefore, it should keep it from uh, going over. I'm going to put a couple more on there. Just to be sure. All right. And plus, the chrome color of the duct tape, it should be reflectant to sunlight and or flashlight or spotlight. All right, so there we go. We got the noodle pretty much made. Um, this is where the marker comes in. I use this cap right here this right really small with a fine point sharpie and you can put your name your address your phone number whatever your uh, state recommends or requires and then here we're gonna use the reflectant tape and I like to just fold it in half and just cut it right down the middle don't have to be perfect this is just to uh, if you guys like night fishing this should help make things a little easier finding them just kind of wrap it around and there you go all right next what do we have next now it's time to get the line so the area that we like to fish here um, it varies from you know like three feet all the way to 50 feet um, the more general area we like to fish is anywhere from like 7 to 20 feet so we're going to run three hooks on our jugs. Um, we've ran up to five. In Oklahoma, you can run up to five hooks per line. But five hooks, they seem to always get tangled and stuff like that. So we're just going to run three. And I'm just going to measure approximately, I'm about six foot tall. So I'm going to measure out about 18 foot or so. By the time we tie our swivels and all that, it will come down. Um, a lot of people think when you're catfishing, you got to fish directly on the bottom and that is not so so you can tie your favorite knot you, you want to tie through your eye bolt here and there's a hundred different ways to tie it i just tie a bunch of just different knots because uh if you tie goofy knots a lot of times they won't come out Okay, so 
so there's that now we'll tie the uh railroad spike on there for the uh weight all right so we got that now I'll show you how we rig them with these swivels. All right, so we like to fish our first hook about two to three feet from the top. So we'll just make a little slip knot like that right there. And these three out swivels are just a perfect size. You just slip it through the eye, slip it over, and then pull it taut like that. And then there you go, you got your first swivel on there. So then you take about six to eight inch leader, but we're gonna tie it. You can you can put these as long as you want. The longer you get, the more tangled you usually get, and it makes it just a little harder to roll these jugs up at the end of the day and stuff like that. Now if you wanna get fancy, you can burn these ends off and all that. I'm not too worried about that. All right, then you just slip this back through pretty much the same way you just did the swivel come back under your knot side and then you got a clean loop right there and this is where the eagle claw the uh, six aught you got to make sure you get the ones with the bigger eyes I've bought many hooks and tried to do this and only to get them home and not remember to check the eye size so these eagle claw circle hooks the six aught at least and the five aught even they have the bigger eyes so you can just squeeze that, push it right through, and loop it right over your hook like that. Pull it taut, and there you go. So I'll do two more. Try to space them out about five, six feet. And like I said, guys, there is a hundred different ways to do this. This is just the way we do it. Um, it's easy. Um, if it's just a matter of time if you run these long enough you are going to get knots these catfish get on there and I'm telling you they just spin and spin and spin and sometimes even using this braided line them suckers will make a mess in this line and you don't have a choice you got to replace it so the way I'm doing this right here you can take these right off and just replace the uh, leader with the hook on it just like a trout line if you guys run trout lines you have those quick snap connectors or whatever they're called there you go there's two and the last one will be towards the bottom like I was saying though a lot of people um, assume you got to fish on the bottom for catfish but we have way more luck um, fishing suspended you know off the bottom anywhere from a couple of feet all the way to the very top of the water of the lake um, a lot of people think that just assume that all catfish are bottom feeders but that's not true they do eat a lot off the bottom but they do stay suspended quite a bit I don't have live scope or any fancy thing like that but the way we fish and we catch them you know when we have these things a foot or two off the bottom works out pretty well even when they're all the way to the top so all right last one and when you're making, you know, like 10 or 20 of these, this takes a little time, and this seems to be one of the fastest ways to do it. So there you go, and then once you get all that, this is, this is what's nice. All right, so you're at the lake, you've had your noodles out, you went and checked them, and you're ready to go home, and you're going to pull the noodles out for the day. So this is the easiest way we found to do it, is you take your noodle, just start wrapping your line around as tight as you can, and be careful. Just go a little bit at a time. Don't let the hook get in your finger because these hooks are sharp. And just keep tension on your noodle like this or you can just go like this right here. You don't have to be in a hurry. Um, our kids are 13 and 11 and they do this and they're safe by doing it. Get this up here. Like I said, when you're out there on the lake, you know, there's never perfect conditions. There's going to be wake or waves. There's going to be wind. So just take your time because you do not want to get these in your hand. But then you just roll that up like that, and uh, there you go.
you are done with your noodle. So in Oklahoma, we can have up to 20 noodles per person and you can have five hooks per noodle where it's gonna run three, usually run between 10 and 15 noodles. And you guys have been watching the video. If you haven't been watching our videos, go back and watch some of them. You can see some of the fish and uh, how many we usually catch on 10 or 12 noodles. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or leave an email down below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and we'll see you next time. Good luck.